Welcome back to Medicine Deconstructed. I'm your host, Dr. Jay Rutland. We've talked about so much immunology. Today, I'm going to discuss immunity and immunology as it pertains to exercise. Does exercise help the immune system? How does it help? And how much should I actually be doing? Let's talk about that with a little nutrition right now. I know you guys can hear all the cooking. Here's the thing about nutrition, it's extremely important. One of the cardinal rules of nutrition is really to understand what you're eating. And to do that, you're probably gonna need to weigh your food. One of the general rules I use when I'm providing nutrition advice to my patients or even to my friends is I try to say, listen, I want what's on your plate to be completely of a variety. That is, half of what's on your plate needs to be from the produce section, the other half I don't care what it is, but I want half of it being fruits and vegetables, something that's grown in the ground or on a tree. Because what these fruits and vegetables actually have are essential vitamins for your body to be able to run efficiently and effectively. It allows your immune system to function properly. It allows your muscles to function properly. It allows you to look good because you need those essential vitamins, which are basically cofactors for the enzymes that run your body. So from a nutritional standpoint, that's extremely important. But now let's get into exercise and to talk about what that can do for your immune system. Exercise immunology is a newer subject with greater than 90% of the publications revealing themselves after 1990. However, there were significant discoveries in the early 1900s. In the early 1900s, Scientists were able to see changes in white blood cell counts in Boston marathoners after the race. We now focus on not just acute changes, but chronic changes in the immune system over time. In general, acute exercise stimulates the interchange of the innate immune system cells and components between lymphoid tissues and the blood compartment. Remember, you get this exchange of white blood cells they are traveling up and down your body now, probably a little faster. This leads to improved immune surveillance against pathogens and cancer cells and overall reduced systemic inflammation. This is for acute exercise under about 60 minutes. You'll get recirculating of immunoglobulins, the antibodies that recognize pathogen, natural killer cells, B cells, and T cells. You will also get improving glucose and lipid metabolism. Again, I'm talking exercise in 60 minute bouts. When you actually look at the data on long athletic events and longer exercise bouts, even marathons, you can have some immune dysfunction, inflammation, oxidative stress, and severe muscle damage. In terms of long exercise, there was a large epidemiology study on marathoners, about 2,500 of them, and the week after the race, and they looked at upper respiratory tract infections. 13% of the marathoners had upper respiratory tract infections after the race versus 2.2% of control runners. There have been multiple studies showing endurance athletes having an illness post-event. When you look at moderate exercise, 60 minutes or less, there was a 45 to 50% reduction compared to sedentary individuals in upper respiratory tract infection symptoms following these individuals over the long haul. Overall, there can be a reduction in systemic inflammation in physically active and lean individuals. Yes, you will see an increase in white blood cell count and a variety of cytokines, including interleukin-6, 8, 10, 1 RA, and others. But individuals will have lower resting levels if they are fit and perform exercise regularly. Inflammation will decrease as long as there is weight loss. Another interesting finding has to do with the gut. We are now beginning to understand the gut microbiome plays an extremely important role in disease. You've heard a lot about this. But recent studies do show that exercise and fitness diversifies the gut microbiota, enhancing the number of benign microbes in your gut. Again, exercise seems to be a good thing, but I'm talking no more than 60 minutes. I wanna quickly address immunosenescence, which is defined as immune dysregulation with aging. Older individuals 
end up obtaining immune senescence. This is why these people get sicker. Elderly individuals who participate in exercise have an enhanced vaccine response, lower numbers of exhausted T cells, and increased function of their white blood cells. In other words, their immune system works better because they're participating in exercise. Here's another thing. I know a lot of you right now are asking, what about late weightlifting? What about resistance training? Well, there's positive data here as well. There is some evidence that T cells can be released from the muscle to aid the immune system when needed. So more muscle, more capability to do this. Also, when looking at obesity, there was a study combining both resistance training, 30 minutes of it, with aerobic training, 20 minutes of that, three times a week for 12 weeks. And this led to better lung function. You got reduced airway resistance. You're less likely to have asthma, in other words. And you also had a reduction in pro-fibrotic cytokines like IGF-1. Virtually every exercise can be deemed positive for the immune system. So I continue to suggest exercise 20 to 60 minutes a day. Yes, of course, there's a limit, which can lead to muscle breakdown, injury, and a depleted, exhausted immune system leading to higher rates of infection. I am not saying do not go longer than 60 minutes. I am saying 20 minutes a day is great, and we all can do that. I appreciate you guys being here on this episode of Medicine Deconstructed. Please come back next week. We're just here to arm you with some information, so come back next week for some more ammunition. Thanks a lot. Thank you.